Hello, friends. Uh, so today we'll be sharing uh, with you a very, very interesting topic, which is on a decentralized uh, finance, or uh, they call it DeFi. So let me just share the screen, then we will cover in detail about this world of DeFi, okay, decentralized finance. Um, those of you who do not know me, my name is uh, Som Asom Prakash. I am a business coach and a consultant, and uh, I help people with all the opportunities in different uh, to make money online, to be your own boss. So we'll discuss about now decentralized finance. Okay, so what is decentralized finance? If you haven't heard about it or DeFi, you will definitely hear about it uh, in uh, coming days and coming years. Um, why is it so is because decentralized finance became quite popular um, or it came into public knowledge in 2020, uh, 21 and 2021 was a big year um, where uh, decentralized finance was, uh, you know, became, it became extremely popular where uh, companies uh, in like Coinbase or Binance, and they became, uh, you know, multi-billion dollar companies. And, uh, you know, they raised a lot of uh, finances online um, and uh, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, the public public offer. Okay. Um, now, let's discuss then, um, you know, decentralized finance, why is it so, uh, so popular or is going to be so popular if you haven't heard about it. Um, so this is the new era of uh, financing. Okay, so let's talk about what is finance. Now, finance is kind of a my domain as well. I started my career in accounting and moved into um, IT and also in the IT sector, I work in in the finance sphere um, in, in taxation or you know um, creating automated systems uh, so that you know the tax taxation could be automated online uh, so in in the system so you do not know kind of a human intervention so uh, now with the decentralized finance this is a very interesting concept whereby uh, whatever until now the banks used to do um so or the financial institutions like uh, you know if i say finance what comes to your mind it's usually uh, what comes to your mind is uh, um, you know it's a uh, banks insurance sector like insurance companies uh, stock exchanges um and you know banks could be a high street bank could be an investment banks so that kind of a, you know uh, sums it up as uh, you know finance and it's a multi-trillion dollar industry, as you know, uh, you know, that is where, uh, you know, every, every, every economy or every household or everything roams around financing. Okay. So now you have to understand what is a decentralized finance. So until now, if you see the entire financial system has been controlled uh, um, or they call it centralized. Okay. What does that mean? So that means we do not have any control on our finances. So if I have money and I, it's unsafe for me to keep it at my home and how we, how we um, uh, perceive money is, uh, you know, the notes, okay. Now, if the notes are getting redundant or uh, going out of practice, then what is coming in or what came in is, uh, you know, like um, the the banks where you put uh, the money in and uh, your money is uh, not represented by this paper notes or you know uh, the metallic coins but is represented by a figure on your uh, uh, on your laptop or your app you see the figure and you feel happy that okay i have that kind of a money sitting in the bank account okay so that's a figure it's it's no more notes so the definition of money has changed uh, quite significantly but now if i have a money so that means uh, a, what is money if you if you understand it is uh, you know uh, an an exchange okay and so it is a medium of exchange for you know uh, a product or a service okay now that medium of exchange sometimes you know is represented by by you know paper and uh, you know sometimes by metallic uh, you know things we call it coins okay now 
going uh, you know after you know the the different era of uh, evolution of money if you know we discussed about that in our earlier video as well the evolution of money if you haven't uh, watched it i would highly suggest you to go and watch it so it will have a lot of information about how from um, uh, barter uh, economy or barter money where you know you are exchanging uh, kind of a one thing for the other to we have moved on and become you know like for example digital money and uh, you know now we have the cryptos and all so it is quite a quite evolving and changing and if we do not understand and do not know about how the finance system is going to work in the future um, probably you know we will be lagging behind uh, you know and those people who are going to take advantage of this decentralized finance what is coming in in uh, you know the so it's going to be mainstream you know in few years so those people who can take advantage they can be humongously successful in this area okay so now let's go back and see okay so now we discuss about the bank okay so the bank used to be uh you know they were the custodian for uh, the money what what i have what you have uh okay so what was their responsibility what was their role or what is their role you know it's not was it's not gone but it's going to you know slowly uh, maybe phasing out uh, as we evolve or the as the concept of money and finances evolves so um so they were the custodian so that means they keep they take care of and they keep the keep the money so that means it's unsafe in the pay form of paper uh, so uh, when it is uh, you know deposited uh, you know that means the money is represented by a bank balance so that means a figure and that figure is uh, you know guaranteed by you know the government okay so that is where you know you, if you see that uh, you know different countries there are uh, there are different government regulated uh, bodies who guarantees a certain amount of money up to certain amount of money they guarantee for each and every household so that means beyond that so that means if the bank goes bankrupt okay or it's been hacked and then all money is gone uh, still you know uh, you are covered by you know uh, government um, kind of a backing okay but i think that is up to certain level i guess in the uk where i am from uh, i am right now it's around 80 i think around 65 uh, you know 70 or 80 thousand pounds i guess per account i may be wrong but every country uh, or every sort of a you know um, um, modern or you know Western world, if you see you know countries have kind of a guarantee. Certain countries in Asia or Africa they may not have the central government uh, government's guarantee uh, for each and every account. But most of uh, the, you know the first world countries you know have that. Okay. So, so that is the guarantee, and that is the reason why we go and we deposit the money. But what happens, you know, whatever the money uh, we deposited, it's uh, tomorrow it just uh, evaporates, okay, for nothing. You know, if you do not have a government guarantee, that is worth nothing. So that means banks, we are relying on the banks quite heavily. And uh, then you have to understand that the money what you are depositing, and what happens to that money is the bank, they now go ahead and they play with our money. So that means what do they do? So the, they lend out uh, you know, that money in terms of loan. Okay, so that means the bank's financial reserves for out of the reserves, that means you, your and mine deposits into the bank account become the bank reserves and they just loan it out to different people because you know, someone may be looking for money to buy, buy a house. So that means that's there comes the mortgage, okay, um, house loan, okay, or somebody wants to buy a car. So that's, that's a loan. So that is the finance. That is what banks have been doing and running their business by, uh, you know, identifying this, uh, you know, gap in the market where, you know, there is um, people having the money, they want to keep their money and people who are looking for the money. And that's where they make a huge chunk of profit out of it. Okay. So just imagine that, uh, you know, right now the, your banks uh, hardly pays you 0.1% uh, uh, interest on your bank deposits. Okay, if you if you go for fixed deposit as well as barely one percent, I guess, or uh, you know maybe in that reason one or two percent. But just imagine when you go and go for a loan, you take out a loan. How much of interest you will be charged? Okay, let's say you go tomorrow and buy. You want to take a car loan. How much you will be charged? 
okay, you will be charged quite heftily. Okay, I don't know about the rates right now, what's in, uh, what's going on now, but four, five, six, ten percent as well up to there are different banks at different rates. So that means that they are not giving you as a depositor any any money, but they are making that kind of a money. Okay, to, to, uh, you know, seven, eight, ten percent, twelve percent, and even on credit card. Okay, if you are taking a credit card loan, that is around 20, 25%. Just imagine how much of money they are charging, but they are keeping it to yourself, keeping it to themselves. Okay. So, so that has been the uh, way banks had been operating until now. So going forward, when we are, you know, getting into the decentralized finance, then everything is going to change. Okay, any digital finance is uh, when I can be my own bank. Okay, so that means I can operate banking operations. You must be wondering, what do I mean by that? So that means just imagine if you X bank out of your equation. Okay, so that means we'll go to the next slide where we'll be explaining that. Okay, so when the banks are out of the picture, okay, and you can be a bank in the sense that whatever the banks have been doing, what banks have been doing, collecting money from people who want some return or safe custodian of their money. There are two objectives of putting money in the bank, either safe custody or a return, at least some return, okay? So the other two reasons, you put the money into a bank account. So what if you can be a bank, okay? So that means, be, uh, people having the money, they can, uh, you know, give you the money, okay? But they are not giving you the money, uh, you know, you must be thinking, okay, how can somebody give me the money because, you know, or how can you give the money to someone else because somebody can run away. So there comes the concept of smart contract, okay? So now you understand that. So the decentralized finance is run um, with the concept of smart contract. Smart contract is very simple terms. So if I am going to uh, deposit or give the money to you, okay? Now, when you are talking about you means an individual, how, what can you do? So you can develop your website of your own, okay? So that means you have access to the global fund, okay? People can communicate with you. And then your website could be integrated uh, with a, there is something called wallet, okay? So what is a uh, wallet? Wallet is where digital wallet, uh, you know, um, for example, uh, there is a company called MetaMask. There are so many wallets right now, but MetaMask is quite popular. Uh, you know, MetaMask is a wallet, crypto wallet, okay? So that means you're, uh, you are keeping the money uh, in cryptocurrency, okay? Cryptocurrency, what is cryptocurrency? That means that is a, cryptography involved there. What is, what is again cryptography? So cryptography is a, a technology, okay? It's kind of, a, you know, um, uh, it's kind of, a, you can say it's it's coded, it's, it's more safer, okay? Um, uh, you know, and here, you know, the encryption, you know, um, is involved where encryption is where the cryptography is coming from. And you must have heard about, uh, you know, encryption technology okay so that means uh, you know your um, uh, you know encoding and decoding of uh, any specific you know any information uh, uh, to be encrypted okay means uh, you know it is changing the format in such a way that people uh, you know will not it won't be hacked okay cryptography is is uh, you know enabling that technology much uh, you you may have heard about okay uh, well uh, there are some frauds and uh, you know happening in in the cryptocurrency world as well if you haven't heard it there are, there are cases as well um, they call it rug pull uh, you know um, or uh, the people coming or hack into uh, someone's uh, wallet and uh, you know the money goes away so that is all there okay why because uh, you know, if you are not safe, that means if I am the custodian of my own money, when I become the custodian of my, my money, so I probably have to, um, you know, um, increase my standard of safety of my money. Okay, just like the way when I put the money into the bank account, my bank have a lot of uh, you know safeguard measures in their website on their apps, you know, so that the no one can hack into their system. 
So when it comes to the decentralized finance, that means I am the custodian of my money. Then what happens here is, uh, you know, uh, I am responsible for managing my money. That's another story as well. If you do not know how to manage your money, then your entire money goes, uh, goes out as well. That means you don't know what to do. How do you, how you operate? Okay, because banks know that that is the nature of the business. They know that if I'm, we are making the money, we are going to lend it out and we are making uh, more money out of it. So banks are aware of it. Okay, so the, the business operation. But when you become uh, your own bank, so that means you have the ability to, uh, you know, um, uh, to, to, to uh, be the custodian of your own money or somebody else's money as well. So if you want to operate a bank yourself, you know, mini bank, you can say that means what is banking, whatever the roles and responsibilities of banks are doing, you can do that. So you can, you can be your own bank, but you need to know the game as well of how do you operate. But you when you are operating and you know okay you are you are embedding these systems you know foolproof system you are just making uh, you, you're taking all the measures safety measures then you can uh, be as a robust okay you can uh, you know with uh, with implementation cryptocurrency you are super powerful okay but you have to make sure that you know your money is uh, not um, you know, um, being exposed that you are not uh, exposing your private key. Uh, you know, you you know you have to make sure that your system is all uh, you know safe and it is uh, not uh, you know uh, it's safe from any any hacking and uh, you know any viruses and all those. Things. So you have to make sure about that. But decentralized finance makes it possible for individuals, people like you and me, to have the access to the banking system. Okay, banking system means access to money, um, as access to uh, the operation or the things what banks used to do, we have access to those as well. Okay, we can have the access. So that is called decentralized finance. And that is, that is where the cryptography, okay, the technology of cryptography involved. So cryptography where, you know, you know about the blockchain, okay, blockchain technology. What is blockchain technology? If you haven't uh, watched that video, I would suggest to go and watch the video. We have an earlier video on blockchain. Okay, what is, uh, so that is a block, okay, which captures, okay, what is a block? This is a, you know, um, collection of transactions uh, recorded, okay, it's a ledger. What is a ledger again? Ledger is, a, to a layman's term, is a, where, a, you know, earlier days, the accountant of a company, if you see, they used to record in ledger. So that means this is the money go, uh, going out, this is came, coming in, and they keep a record of it, okay? So that record, when it's digitally kept, okay? That is first thing, digitally kept. That means not a manually so many records, just like the way banks are recording it in their system that you have that money when you deposit your money. Exactly the same way in a blockchain where the, you know, the record is kept, uh, is kept on different nodes. Okay. Again, what are nodes? Nodes are, uh, you know, um, different computers or servers. Okay. They could be all around the world okay this your computer where you are watching or if you are watching it from your from a computer this video or or even your phone could be as powerful you know uh, your phone is also so powerful it has to be you know on 24 7 but if you keep it on and it can act as a server you can mint as well uh, the cryptocurrency and you know that is where you can uh, your blockchain could uh, you know could, could reside as well okay so what happens here is when you have, you are in a decentralized finance means your money, you know, you can keep your money with a very high interest rate, very high interest rate you can also get because you have to manage your own finance. Okay. So instead of putting the money in your bank where you make a 0.1%, you can be the custodian of your own money. That means you have to know uh, that if you are loaning or lending out your money, you can make a lot of return. Okay out of your money as well. So we, in a next video, we'll discuss about that. Okay, I'll show you some of the website, uh, you know, just blowing, it will blow your mind up of how much of return only by putting the money as a deposit, how much of money you can make, okay? So that means 
decentralized finance is uh, you know a way whereby you are the custodian of your own money and you can also help other people with their because somebody says that okay i am working full time i have um, you know i don't want to manage my own finances can somebody else uh, do that okay as a matter of fact a lot of people do that okay that is where all the investment banks and all the mutual fund and all those fund managers came into existence you know because you know they they manage our, all of our funds okay so that is also a big market and you can you can uh, you, if you want, you can also look into and uh, you know you can have your own DAP. Okay, what is a DAP? D D uh, decentralized applications is called D A P P DAP. Okay, so that means you can develop your own uh, application, your own uh, application whereby you people can connect their wallet uh, and uh, you know. Uh, it will be on the blockchain and uh, you know uh, you can uh, if you have access to fund you can you can get the uh, you know people can deposit and you can give them a good return and uh, you know uh, that money what what is deposited now it could be uh, you know loaned out to people okay and that is going that is a, such a big market there are so many companies now pouring in so we'll discuss about that in a minute so what is again decentralized finance? Well, decentralized finance is uh, the modern day financing or it's going to be a crypto, uh, uh, cryptography based uh, finance model whereby the banks will no longer be the custodian of our money, but uh, you know, a blockchain will be and uh, you know, a piece of code which is called smart contract. What is a smart contract? Let's go back. You know, we forgot to finish that. Uh, you know, discussing about us. What is a smart contract? So, if I want to take a loan from a bank, what they used to do is, uh, you know, first of all, uh, KYC. I have to go for a KYC. Know your customer. So that means I have to give them a copy of my passport, driving license, my address proof, identity proof, and everything else, as you know. So they have to make sure that I am the right person to take the money because I may just take the money and run away. Okay, so that, that, that is there. But in a, in a new world of decentralized finance, that is not going to happen. So in a new world of decentralized finance, uh, you know, it's the, it's the codes. Codes are the, uh, are the most powerful, uh, you know, uh, thing, okay, and the digital finance world. So that means uh, there is, uh, you know, a coded contract, okay, coded contract. That, uh, what does that mean? So that means, you know, you know, in this example of, uh, you know, uh, specific bank loan we discussed about that, you know, so that, that used to be a contract. That means this is the how, you know, um, this is how much of loan you are taking. Bank says, says, says that, okay, this is how much I, uh, interest I'll be charging. This is the term of your loan. In case you don't pay the loan, this is this is what I we are going to do. So all the terms and conditions are put together in a contract. Okay, then bank signs it, you sign it, or bank was, uh, you know, produces it their own paper and you just agree that, yes, I, I agree with you, then that, that becomes a contract, okay? That is legally enforceable as well, okay? So that means in case you don't want to pay or you are not able to pay the money back, then the banks will uh, get hold of all your money um, or all of your asset, which uh, the collateral, what we, you put in. So in a smart contract world, there is no banks, no human intervention. Okay, so that means that is where it's called smart contract. Okay, smart contract means uh, uh, you know the contract is written, so the everything is coded. Okay, so um, you know I just have to agree. I just have to go through the terms and conditions, and uh, you know. Um, and which is quite apparent, you know, it is uh, visible to the entire world, not only you and me uh, who are entering into the contract, but entire world, because this is all, uh, you know, uh, saved, okay, the information is saved, uh, you know, the digital contract, okay, it's called a smart contract, it is on a blockchain um, on a blockchain, what does that mean? On a blockchain means this contract, this piece of code, this piece of information, okay, it is usually written with a, you know, um, in, with a code called Solidity, okay, Solidity is a code, it's a Java, uh, JavaScript, uh, you know, kind of a JavaScript based code, but it is uh, written on the, uh, you know, Solidity uh, programming language is written, whereby, you know, anyone knowing the Solidity, you know, they can read the code, okay of what is what does it stand for as a matter of fact most of these uh, applications uh, they get their uh, you know 
contract uh, audited as well okay you should get into uh, you know um, the get in uh, with a, uh, with any kind of an entity okay or someone um, who uh, who is audited already okay so that that is what um, you know you have to make sure that you know that's a bit of a credibility so you simply don't want to give it out uh, give out a money to someone and then that's person just uh, you know takes uh, your money and runs okay anyways now let's compare these uh, decentralized finance uh, with the traditional financing system. So traditional financing system, we just uh, you know uh, take this example of sending money. Okay, that is another uh, rule. Okay, and uh, the banks have been paying uh, playing for uh, for some time now is money remittance. Okay, so not only the banks, but there are you know other financial institutions as well who are involved in remittance of money. Uh, but uh, you know, one of the bank's role was uh, you know remittance of money from one person to the other person. They transfer the money, so you can transfer the money, uh, you know, from your account to somebody else's account. So how usually it happens? Okay, so that could be a peer-to-peer -peer transfer. That means you transfer the money to somebody else uh, going through a bank app. That is, you know, pretty clear. You know, peer-to-peer -peer it goes through. So you send the money. So that means uh, what happens uh, here is uh, you know uh, you know the money what you have is with your bank so you are instructing your bank so your bank communicates uh, with another bank and that bank is you know the person's bank who you are sending the money to and then you know these two banks communicates and uh, you know uh, in their ledger in the first bank's ledger the account uh, you know um, balance is uh, reduced and the other bank's account balance the other person's account balance increases okay that is how the bank transfer happens that is traditional finance, and if you get complicate it a bit, uh, you know, um, a bit further, uh, there may be some, you know, other uh, parties as well. Um, like if you are doing a transaction through, uh, you know, Mastercard or Visa card, what happens there is there is another layer there as well. Okay, so that means if you are, uh, let's say you are going and shopping, okay, uh, then there is another layer means, uh, you know. Um, that shopping, uh, you may be doing it through your Visa card or a MasterCard, okay, usually credit card, you know, you swipe your card, okay. So when you swipe your card, then there is a Visa or a MasterCard or, you know, other um, um, companies there as well, okay. In this example, as you see, PayPal or Venmo, you know, some other companies also um, um, are giving the service. So what happens here is, uh, you know, when you swipe or you give, uh, you know, uh, swipe your card at any of your local superstore, what happens there is that Visa is involved and Visa communicates with your bank, okay. And they say that, okay, this is a transaction, uh, you know, I had to, you know, fulfill and you have the instruction from your, this guy, your customer, and then your bank receives the instruction and then they pass it on to, um, you know, the money, they pass the money to, through your, uh, you know, Visa or MasterCard to, uh, to the banks, uh, you know, uh, the receiver of uh, whoever that money you are sending to, so for example, in this case, your superstore, their bank account, you know, the money goes in and, you know, the receiver is, gets intimated. So that is how it happens. But in a decentralized finance, so all this complexity of banks are all eliminated. What happens here is you are there. So you can instantly send the money just at the fractions of seconds, okay? Um, you know, you can send the money to anyone, okay? By logging into their, uh, you know, just that person has to give you, okay? Uh, you know, his uh, wallet reference, uh, you know, his URL or wallet uh, URL. So money gets transferred from your wallet to that person's wallet in fractions of seconds. Okay. So that is how it happens. So there is no banks involved in between. Okay. This is called the blockchain based, uh, you know, um, remittance. Okay. So that is the power of digital finance, guys. So that means you do not have to pay hefty bank transfer fees here. It is, uh, you know, uh, well, there are, there is some, you know, some fees, we call it a gas fees in, uh, in Ethereum world, it's called gas fees. There's some fees involved, but, you know, with the evolution or new and new dApps, uh, you know, or decentralized applications coming in and which are running this different network, just like you must have heard about Ethereum or Bitcoin network. There are other networks as well, which are coming in which are way more like, for example, uh, um, Polygon network or Terra network, okay? So the transactions are quite cheap. 
okay and you can get your money transferred from uh, you know from someone in uh, you know even the cross uh, chain network so that means from one network to the other network you, you can uh, you can stand somebody is in a bitcoin you can you are sending bitcoin to somebody else uh, you know which is uh, you know um, uh, which who has another wallet uh, you know so that could be transferred there are some exchanges which does that sort of a transfer or swapping they say and your money gets transferred uh, to the other person. So now I just don't want to get into the details of different blockchains, uh, you know, the different networks, but in a blockchain world, it is a much more safer, much more quicker, but you just have to make sure because you are the custodian, you have the money with in, in your digital wallet, not the physical wallet, just like you have it in your pocket. So it is, uh, you know, your digital wallet, you have to make sure that you keep it safe. Okay, so that means it's recommended to have a physical kind you know, physical, uh, you know, device, uh, you know, connected um, or to save your uh, key into your, um, you know, physical device, which is just like kind of a USB, you can say, you know, a drive. Um, it's not exactly the USB drive, it's just much more um, encrypted and much more robust and, uh, you know, hacking proof but you know just to give you an analogy of how how, how you can interpret and whenever your money transferring the money you can connect that device into uh, you know the usb port of your of your computer and then you know the device transfers the money okay now how exactly it happens well you know you just have to get hold of uh, and um, you know your wallet just go to uh, go to your alice level just like the way i discussed about metamax and then you can click on send and you can send the money to anyone you want okay uh, as long as you have their address okay address means their uh you know uh, crypto address okay or that wallet address okay anyway so decentralized finance uh, i hope it made sense to you now this is where you know the real fun game starts okay decentralized uh, finance uh, you know rules or what are the different kinds of uh, things can be done and what has been done it's been done in the De De uh, defi world okay decentralized finance world okay so defi is used for buying and selling of cryptos okay so that means buying and selling of currencies, you can buy, you can sell uh, without paying hefty fees. You can do that through decentralized exchanges. Okay, there are centralized exchange, and decentralized exchanges as well, you know, in crypto world. So centralized exchanges uh, like Coinbase or Binance or KuCoin. So these are kind of a, a centralized exchanges for crypto decentralized exchange that means uh, you know when it becomes centralized that means there is government regulations and uh, you know um anyone can hack into their uh, system that will be because they still uh, are the custodian of your money okay they keep your own money so in a decentralized world like for example uniswap pancake swap sushi swap there are so many decentralized exchanges. these are kind of uh, you know major ones but there are so many of them you know um, out there so the decentralized exchange we call it a dex which is also called what dex decentralized exchange dex okay so there are so many of them there who uh, who facilitates uh, buying and selling of cryptos and uh, you know they also facilitated uh, you know the the next of borrowing and lending as well okay now we have these two ave and compound are the major or most popular um, you know, borrowing a lending platform. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, is it not decentralized? No. So what happens in Aave and Compound? Okay. This is decentralized whereby any, uh, you know, you are entering into, a, you are taking a loan from Aave. Okay. Um, Aave is just a platform provider. They, they just, uh, you know, take a percentage of, uh, you know, the, your transaction fee, you know, they charge, but the service what they provide, is just giving you the opportunity to take a loan or you can um, you can uh, deposit money into these platforms and you can make money out of it. Compound as, as well, exactly the same. You can provide uh, money and they call it a liquidity, to a liquidity pool and you can make hefty sum of money out of this, okay? So this is an amazing field, guys. Uh, you know, all of, uh, all of us, I think we should look into these, uh, you know, borrowing and lending, okay? This is, uh, you can make a hell lot of money uh, where your money is uh, sitting idle, you know, depreciating as this inflation is uh, picking up. Your money is depreciating in value whereby these platforms can help you to skyrocket your return now let's talk about stable coin okay that is an amazing field as well in decentralized finance 
which uh, you know digital finance came up with this concept of stable coin so what is a stable coin stable coin is or they are uh, so many stable coins these are some of the major stable coins i have put together here called dai okay first one as you see in the written d is dai tether or this uh, short form is usdt and usdc and binance and terra us uh, usd which is called ust as well okay so these are kind of a major trading uh, stable coin so what is a stable coin stable coin is uh, a currency which is pegged okay now pegged to up to the value of us dollar so that's where you will see that usdt usdc okay why they have put usdt so that means there is a peg what is a peg peg means uh, you know this it it creates or maintains the, because in uh, the crypto world if you see cryptocurrencies are quite volatile what does that mean so if you go to let's say coinmarketcap.com where you know this is where you can see the uh, you know um, the currencies uh, you know what is the current rate and uh, you know uh, prevailing rate right now uh, what what price are buying and selling now in this world of uh, you know crypto um you know the uh you know because of the high volatility you know some you know like for example you know the um you know bitcoin you know it has suddenly gone up so 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 much of uh, value and then suddenly you will see that okay, it loses value it goes down as well and same with uh, uh, you know um other other currencies uh you know um like luna i am a big uh, sort of believer of luna it's it's increasing there right now um, um but uh you know um it it may come down so there are so many around uh, how many are two, two or three thousand different coins and uh protocols and uh you know um so different um uh, different uh, uh tokens are available out there for you to involve in um but because these uh, tokens and the coins are highly volatile so today they have a certain price and tomorrow it may fluctuate to 10 15 percent and then and day after it may come down so some of the you know top brains uh, they thought of this idea okay why don't we do this why don't we have a, a currency which is a peg we'll have a cryptocurrency this is not fiat fiat means whatever you know usd us dollar is a fiat currency great britain pound is a fiat currency euro is a fiat currency rupees is a fiat currency but that means the central exchange this is regulated uh, you know currency which is regulated and minted by the um, by the state or the government okay or custodians of government uh, money so they they mint it okay but in a fiat uh, or sorry in a in a crypto world which is different than the fiat world. Um, so they have these, uh, you know, currencies which are pegged. That means it, uh, it is kind of a, you know, uh, creates the same value. Okay, um, uh, maintains the same uh, valuation as of a U.S. dollar. So that means U.S. dollar if cost one dollar, uh, one dollar U.S. and one, uh, if you spend one dollar you'll get one USDT. I mean, it may not be one, but 99.98 or, uh, you know, one dollar and one cent, something like that, you know, but but it's pegged. So that means it is at that region. So it doesn't fluctuate. Okay. So why does it not fluctuate uh, like any other, like Tether or, you know, um, uh, Bitcoin, uh, you know, uh, why, why does it not, uh, you know, uh, fluctuate? It's because they mine it or they burn it. Mining is what? Any currency mining is your generating currencies. It's called mining, mining of Bitcoin. That means you are creating the Bitcoins, okay? Um, so, or, or minting, you call it a mining or minting. It's kind of a one and the same. But burning is when you destroy. That means how can you destroy a currency? That means you just send the currency to a specific address which uh, you know is not recoverable okay so that means gone forever okay so so you can you can do that as well so with these stable coins okay this is a revolutionary thing whereby the stable coins is when you know you do not have to if you need the money uh, or you want to sell a cryptocurrency because the cryptocurrencies are all what digital assets these are assets so you you want to keep it uh, you know because it value appreciates well you can 
uh, you know, if you want to sell, you know, to for, because you want to buy some, uh, you know, um, currency in in future. Okay, let's say you want to sell, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, some uh, Bitcoin so that uh, you know you can buy. And because you are you are thinking that you know it may go down, but now it's on the peak. You want to sell it, and then tomorrow you you want to invest it again when it buy price goes down. You can do that. It's all again up to your expectation and you know buying or going up uh, and down of the trend. But okay, when you sell it, you can keep it in these uh, stable coins instead of converting those into your US dollar or euros or any of your fiat currency. You can keep it in this. Uh, you know without. Any charges or very very minimal charges, you know, you can you can dispose of. So that's where we are talking about these uh, buying and selling of crypto. That is possible, and you can keep the money in stable currency as well. So that is super powerful, guys. You know, when you know uh, you know your uh, you know the the currency fluctuations. So you know you are just pegging, or you are uh, not worried about the currency fluctuation. Then uh, you know if you want to keep it safe, the money. Then you can put it or keep it in the stable coin. And I, my suggestion again, I am not a financial advisor. This is not a financial advice, but it makes sense. Or what makes sense to me is to keep the uh, money um, in uh, the stable co coin for a certain duration of time, so that you know later on it can be used as an asset, uh, you know, high yield, you know, generating asset. Okay, so now we have discussed about uh, stable coin. We discussed about the buying and selling of cryptos. We had also uh, discussed briefly about borrowing and lending, and then we'll talk about insurance. Okay, insurance also has been a major player. Okay, insurance sector has been uh, you know in in the finance world. This is a quite a quite a big industry. Okay, so now in the insurance field uh, also there is um, you know a lot of uh, you know opportunities are out there as well okay what is insurance anyway okay for example you are insuring uh, you are taking a car insurance insurance against uh, you know breakdown or insurance against accident you know so what is that is you pay a certain premium a uh, certain amount of money to a company okay in return what they give you again this is a financial transaction or financial okay so you give um, your money not only you then so there are so many people who give the money to these, uh, you know, they create a, create a protocol or they, they create a fund or a, a pool uh, of money or they call it fund, okay? So different uh, industry that is called different. So they collect the money as a, uh, in a premium from different people and then, okay, what the insurance company do, okay? Um, uh, if, uh, you know, you meet with an accident or, you know, there is a claim and uh, all the conditions are satisfied, like for example, you know, whatever they say that, okay, these are the things, uh, you know, we can accept your claim. These, these are the circumstances where you can accept the claim and, you know, you can, uh, we can pay you. So that is where if it happens, then you are paid the money out of that pool. Okay, so whatever the money you and you and people like you, me, and thousands of other people are depositing now, so that is a pool of money which, for insurance company, uh, they invest that money, you know, in different uh, areas, and they make money out of it. So that has been uh, the industry until now. Okay, finance industry. Now, in this case of insurance industry as well, it can be decentralized, whereby powered by smart contract okay it's powered by smart contract okay entire this example of uh, you know car okay um you know do i have another slide okay no so um, uh, in the case of uh, you know insurance companies you a smart contract could be written okay whereby if you have a website uh, you know through which uh, you know it's again it has to be connected to a blockchain okay and once it's connected to a blockchain, again, uh, in our next video, we'll discuss about, I'll show, share the screen and we'll show you how the end-to-end -end process works, okay? So, um, so in, the, in the blockchain, um, you know, you can put a smart contract on the blockchain, whereby you can create a contract in the blockchain, whereby it, it, it has all these terms and conditions, okay? That I will be paying monthly around so much of money. Okay, let's say $100 every month or $50 every month towards the insurance of the car, okay? And uh, my car built, uh, you know, is so and so. So all the description is there, okay? And then uh, that smart contract also has conditions of, um, you know, how I'm going to be paid in case of a claim, 
Okay, so let's say say that okay, if there is an accident, okay, so and there has to be a, an inspection uh, whereby you know uh, it has to be proven that there is an accident and uh, you know there was uh, you know the damage of so and so and all these things. Now in the insurance sector, a something called oracle. Okay, what is an oracle? Oracle in this crypto world, uh, you know, oracle as a company, you know, is is, uh, is there as well. Uh, you know, oracle of um, Omaha. Okay, I think um, uh, Warren Buffett is called Oracle of Omaha. So Oracle, the word itself has different meanings, but in this case of uh, decentralized finance or insurance sector, Oracle is uh, you know uh, a company or an app. Okay, you can say an organization or an app or you know a protocol which collects okay the real world information and feeds it to the crypto world or you know uh, to the um, uh, to the uh, blockchain world, okay. So that means real world. You know, if there is a there has been an accident, uh, then you know, uh, you know that information could, uh, and has to be has to be verified by someone, and then they fed into the uh, blockchain world, and then you know entire thing uh, falls into place, and you know uh, people are now um, you know now your claim will be will be honored because because everything is ticked now as per the contract and you honor so there is a lot of things happening guys in the decentralized finance world i hope you know it made some sense to you understood uh, you know the world of decentralized finance and how exciting it is okay so if you also want to be a part of this uh, you know the revolution so you should look into this and see how big is an opportunity how you can also get involved and uh, create serious income, serious money in this world of decentralized finance, okay? So with that, I am done. And uh, if you have any questions and comments, uh, you know, please feel free how I can, um, uh, what are the things, what you want to discuss? And if there is anything I can do to uh, make my videos better, just I'm open for suggestions. But it was pleasure sharing with you guys all the information about decentralized finance, you know, Let's get educated and let's learn and let's change the world. Speak to you soon then. Bye-bye.